Welcome back to Physics Junction. In today's video, let me talk about self-assembly of nanoparticles. Let me start with the overview on self-assembly. So what is self-assembly? It's a process of a spontaneous association of individual units of a material into highly ordered structures or patterns. Simply we can say transformation of disordered structure into ordered ones. In self-assembly, basically the hierarchical structures are obtained from the assembly of nano building blocks and this self-assembly is a powerful strategy for controlling the structure and physiochemical properties of the nanoparticles and this self-assembly system show collective properties that differ from individual nanocrystals and bulk sample. The uniqueness arises due to the interactions among the electronic, magnetic and optical properties of the single nanocrystalline building unit. Thus, these hierarchical structures provide new opportunities for optimizing, tuning, and enhancing the properties and performance of the materials and these self-assembly system find more applications in photo degradation, photocatalytic H2 production, photocatalytic CO2 conversion and sensitized solar cells. So in self-assembly, smaller nano building blocks interact with each other through weak and non-covalent intramolecular forces which facilitates the self-assembly of the units and it forms larger and well-organized patterns. The intramolecular forces are Van der Waals interactions, hydrogen bonds, static charges, magnetic interactions and so on. Usually the intramolecular forces helps to stabilize the self-assembled structures under different environmental conditions. The directionality and the functionality of the self-organized structures are determined by the other functional interactions or forces. So the next one is mechanism of self-assembly. In general, any system wants to go to the low energy state. That is the uh, basic uh, driving force of uh, self-assembly. Therefore, the molecules with a definite shape number of atoms and the size which are in low energy are good candidates for the self-assembly and they are held together by stronger forces. So the self-assembly process depends upon the availability of units of same size and shape. When these building blocks are available for self-assembly, the state of minimum energy is obtained spontaneously even in the absence of any external forces. So here I have shown the hierarchical self-assembly process. So we have a silica nanoparticles which is coated with polycation and it self-assembles with the negatively charged silver nanoparticles to form the metamolecules. Therefore, at thermodynamic equilibrium, interactions between the nanoparticles reduces the system's free energy which leads to exhibit unique physical and chemical properties of the self-assembled system. So this is the continuation of mechanism of self-assembly. In some cases, the self-assembly may occur in the presence of an external driving force too. So like temperature, pressure, magnetic field and so on. So and this self-assembly process are two types. One is uh, static self-assembly and another one is dynamic self-assembly. So if the self-assembly process is taken place in the absence of uh, any external forces then it is called the uh, static self-assembly if it is taken place uh, under any external forces then it will be called the dynamic self-assembly so this is without any external force and the dynamic self-assembly is due to some external driving forces. So in static assembly, the system achieves minimum energy state in the absence of any external forces. Example, formation of ordered crystalline structure from a melt. In dynamic self-assembly process, it involves a constant influence of external force from the ambient. If the energy intake from the ambient stops, then the self-assembly can leave the state of organized structure and deassemble. The next one is different types of interactions in self-assembly. We know that a self-assembling system consists of group of molecules. Here, multiple non-covalent interactions initiate self-assembly process through different pathways. Thus, the self-assembly process occurs at colloidal, molecular or atomic length scale and the interactions are usually fragile and long-range in contrast to the chemical forces. The various interaction forces involved in self-assembly process are attractive driving force, repulsive opposition force and a directional functional force. The example for attractive driving force, hydrophobic pi-pi stacking, hydrogen band, 
van der Waals, salvation, depletion, bridging and coordination as well for repulsive opposition force, electron, double layer, salvation, hydration and steric. The last one is the directional force. The examples are hydrogen bond, steric repulsion and coordination. These are the different forces involved in the self-assembly process. Therefore, the self-assembly occurs when molecules interact with one another through a balance of attractive, repulsive and directional forces. Usually, these forces are weak. It's about 2 to 250 kilojoule per mole. Therefore, if adequate number of uh, building blocks present, they form very stable self-assembly structures. Thus, shape, size and functionality of the final assembly are ordered by their fine balance. Therefore, self-assembling of aggregates is initiated by the balance between attractive and repulsive forces, which is a random process. Here, the structure will be a non-hierarchical structure. The examples for non-hierarchical type are colloidal and micellar systems. This non-hierarchical structure is transformed into hierarchical structure due to the addition of the directional force. Then the self-assembled aggregates show hierarchical structures, example biological and biomimetic systems. So the next one is hierarchical and co-assembly. The static and the dynamic self-assemblies are further classified into hierarchical and co-assembly. The first one is the hierarchical self-assembly. It's a multi-level organization process. Here the elementary molecular units assembles into ordered secondary structures via non-covalent interactions and these building blocks form more complex multifunctional superstructures. The next one is directed self-assembly. So in directed self-assembly, the building blocks occupy the pre-designed places like lithographically patterned substrate, pores in membranes or spaces between the ordered particles. Here the directionality is controlled either by changing the energy or entropy landscapes or applying external fields. The last one is the co-assembly. Co-assembly can be formed with two or more types of blocks which can fit into each other and here the colloidal particles forms more complex hierarchical colloidal superstructures. So far we learned about the self-organization of nanocrystals so which forms a variety of structures including chains, sheets, vesicles, 3D crystals and complicated 3D architectures. So here in this picture uh, we have shown self-assembly of uh, anti-cancer drug uh, which can be administered directly to kill cancer cells without the need for additional carrier or delivery vehicles. So the next one is the self-assembled nano and microstructures like fiber, tube, rings, cage and complex structures which consists peptides and proteins and all these are formed based on the formation of secondary structures and specific interactions. The next one is nanocomposite self-assembly. Basically a nanocomposite is a multi-phase solid material or we can define a structure having nanoscale repeat distance between the different phases that make up the material. So in the case of a polymer based nanocomposite, the organic matrix serves as a template on which specific minerals that is the inorganic material is formed. The arrangement of the biominerals is controlled by the surface tension between the cells, vesicles and the growing minerals. Here it is shown synthesis of platinum around the AU nanocomposite. This is an electrostatic self-assembly of oppositely charged nanoparticles. So we have platinum nanoparticles and gold nanoparticles. Platinum nanoparticles are positively charged and the gold nanoparticles are negatively charged. Here the platinum nanoparticles prepared in polydiely dimethyl ammonium chloride solution as well the gold nanoparticles are synthesized in sodium citrate solution. Once these two solutions are mixed the positively charged platinum nanoparticles interact with the gold nanoparticles and forms the platinum around the AU nanocomposite particles. Next we are going to see self-assembly of nanoparticles via organic molecules. So let's take preformed inorganic nanoparticles that is CDS nanoparticles functionalized with the carboxylic group. So that can be transferred uh, to aluminium thin film. So this is aluminium thin film. Then it is uh, coated with aluminium oxide layer. So the next one is the CDS nanoparticles functionalized with the carboxylic group. So here the self-assembly of CDS nanoparticles occur over this aluminium oxide layer. 
So in the second example, the organic molecule used is diethyl. So the diethyl is adsorbed on the metal oxide layer. So this is a metal. Next to the metal layer, we have the metal oxide layer. The diethyl molecules are adsorbed over this metal oxide layer. The self-assembly of CDS nanoparticles uh, occur over this uh, diethyl. Thus, it forms the CDS nanoparticle layer over the diethyl adsorbed on metal surface. So, the next one is self-assembly of silver nanoparticles adsorbed on oxidized aluminium layer through the carboxylic group and thiol attaches. Here, the chemical reaction takes place in aqueous medium. First, the AG colloidal nanoparticles are transferred into organic solvent and trap casted on an aluminium oxide layer. After the evaporation of this organic solvent, the self-assembled AG nanoparticle layer is left on the metal oxide layer. Next, let's move on to self-assembly in inorganic materials. Here we are going to see spontaneous creation of quantum dots on substrates. Example, germanium quantum dots on silicon substrate, indium arsenide quantum dots on gallium arsenide substrate. So now let's see formation of quantum dots on silicon substrate. Uh, we have the silicon uh, substrate. 3 to 4 layers of germanium deposited epitaxially on the silicon substrate. The layers are highly strained and it is formed without any defects or dislocations. However, with further deposition, the lattice strain is induced by the deposited germanium atoms. Here, the induced strain is the origin for self-assembly. Since germanium and silicon have only 4 percentage of lattice mismatch, so results in formation of nano-sized islands or the quantum dots. This is the electron microscopy image of germanium quantum dots on silicon substrate. The temperature should be greater than 350 degrees C during deposition. The size of the island depends upon the growth temperature and the substrate plane on which it grows. So the next one is SiO2 inorganic particles that is self-assembly of silica particles on glass layer. Silica particles are formed by sargel root. Here the particles are synthesized in aqueous medium and the solution is taken on a glass substrate and allowed to evaporate. So after evaporation the particles self-assemble due to weak van der Waals interactions. Here the capillary force acts as driving force. And the surface energy is minimized by forming a hexagonal network. The size uniformity of the particles lead to make an ordered two-dimensional network of particles. So this is the self-assembly of SiO2 particles. So we have the electron microscopic image of the SiO2 particles on a glass slide. So the last one is applications of self-assembled system. The closed packed arrangement of organic molecules or nanoparticles of the self-assembled system is useful in novel devices because of its simplicity, spontaneity, scalability, versatility and inexpensiveness. The different applications are imaging techniques, biosensors, biomedical sciences, therapeutic delivery, drug delivery, photocatalysis, photovoltaic cells, information technology and environmental sciences. So, so far we have learned about self-assembly of a nanoparticle system. I hope you got some good idea about the self-assembly of nanoparticles. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.